Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emmy and wow, I'm really blown away by the response on my last video. Right now as I'm recording this, it's sitting at about 6k views and so many comments. I've seen all your comments, I've read all your comments. I'm sorry I can't respond back to everybody, but I love the conversations that we're having in the comment section of your guys' tips, what you felt that you didn't agree with in my video. I love seeing them. I love seeing all of them. And most of all, thank you for all the kind comments that a lot of you left me. It has honestly pushed me to continue making videos, and I hope that some of you will stick around and watch them. I have posted a poll a little while back asking what you guys would want to see from me next since I had quite a few video ideas, but I had no idea which one I was going to go with first. A lot of you wanted to see a video about my loadouts. I have chosen that I am going to do individual support videos and not just one loadout video for now and this is why. I've seen time and time again where people will take the builds of the top support players in the world, the grandmasters, the pro players, and use them. But they don't get the same outcome that they want because they don't have the play style that accompanies those cards. And I don't want that to happen. And so to avoid the frustration of that, I'm going to make individual videos so I can give you the context of how my support builds work for me so that you're not having that frustrating moment of the build just not working and you feel that I've lied to you now. The reason I'm starting with Ying is because she is my highest level and she is a very top played support right now that I've noticed. Uh, she's been being picked up a lot more, especially with her recent buffs in this patch. I think that she would be a really good support to start off with, especially since she is quite complex and a lot of people struggle to use her correctly. If you would like to, I'd love if you liked this video, subscribe, and I really do want to hear back from you in the comments. Tell me if you liked this video. Tell me what you did and didn't like about the format of it. Tell me what you want to see from me. Give me your opinions on the things I say in this video because something that is very important for me to state here at the beginning is I am not an expert. Levels don't always equate to the master of knowledge and the things that I'm going to be saying are going to be my opinion and only my opinion. This is the way I play and it works for me and it's okay if it doesn't work for you too. I'm not a grandmaster, I'm not a master, I'm not a pro player. This is from a veteran's perspective, someone who's played for a long time and put in the hours on this character. So that is where I'm giving my opinion from and I hope that you'll stick around to watch. Ying's primary fire, Illusory Mirror, shoots out five threads per shot. Most people know that, some people don't, but it is not one shot, it is five threads. Her reload takes 1.6 seconds, however, you can reduce that to one second once you fall into the muscle memory of when you can cancel the animation. You can either learn by watching the animation and once the mirror falls into the plate, you can stop it, or you can watch the little circle in the middle of the screen and start remembering when it gets to a certain point in the circle, you can stop it. You can stop it by shattering or shooting or whatever ability you need to use at that moment. And I know it's 0.6 seconds, but that can save you a lot of time in split second moments where you need to heal somebody or help somebody. Those 0.5 seconds, 0.6 seconds, they make a world of difference. And that's something super important to any support. Ying's Q ability is illusion. The base health of an illusion is 1000 and it lasts for 8 seconds with no card assistance. The way that her clones heal and work is a little bit finicky. A lot of people assume that it works by percentage of health and that's how it chooses who to heal. It does not. It heals the lowest health person near you. So if you have a sky whose base health is 2100, run across point to get away from somebody and they're only missing say 100 health. And you have your Makoa on point, who is at half health, your clones are going to choose to heal that Sky because the Sky is technically lower in health. She might not need it, but they're going to prioritize her because of her low health. When you're running a healing gang, this is why you need to run talents and cards that align with maximum healing output. Your clones are not coded to understand prioritization you need to understand prioritization. So relying on only them to heal is not going to be beneficial for you. Let's talk about clone placement and how you place these illusions. 
I talked about in my last video very briefly, very rudimentary on how you should place your clones. When placing them, it is not always beneficial to put both of them on point or both of them on a flank route. It is beneficial to put one on point using the center lane and one at a flank route similar to how this would be set up. There are some maps that this is much easier on and there's some maps this is much harder on and you just need to gauge whenever you're choosing if Ying is a good champion to pick, which we'll get into later. When placing clones, you need to determine the tide of the battle. Are three or four of your teammates on point? Maybe put both of your clones in the center lane. Are two flanks on your right flank right now? Well, why don't you put one of your clones at the entrance of that and then keep one on point for the tank? Is this behind cover enough that it can hit, the people can hit me if I were to teleport to it? There's a lot of questions to ask when placing a clone. And as you play Ying more, it will come with practice and muscle memory. Where is wisest to put it? Not every clone you're gonna place is gonna be in the perfect placement. Not every time you teleport to a clone are you gonna feel like you did a stellar job at placing them. It happens and that's okay. Ying's alt fire is Shatter. Her illusions will chase down enemies exploding for 500 damage. Very simple ability. However, I would not necessarily rely on this to deal your damage either. They don't always have the best tracking and even if an enemy is right in front of them, sometimes it will miss them. So I definitely would not rely on these clones to deal the maximum amount of your damage. Ying's movement is Dimensional Link. You swap locations with your illusion or the most recent place they have been. Now, I'd like to talk about the most recent place. This is not necessarily true. If you look at how her dimensional link works and if you've ever played Ying, sometimes you forget to put down clones. And especially when you're in the heat of a fight, it can be hard to remember to place those down. However, the game does not always remember where you have placed your clones. So it will start putting anchors down where you have been walking as evidenced by these clips in the, my own testing range. And it's definitely is not always where the last time your clone was it doesn't have a memory for that long so that is a little deceiving and i would not rely on that at all it will default teleport you to the farthest away clone however i have found that this is a little finicky and it doesn't always do that it can you can teleport several times in that four seconds the four seconds is the base you can augment that with cards and something that a lot of people don't realize is you can hold down your f button to allow you to choose a specific clone or if in your ult, a person, you can choose that specific clone to teleport to instead of just teleporting to the one that it takes you to, which is supposed to be the farthest. There is actually a 0.5 second moment where you can get killed when you teleport. Your body is still stationary in that moment and the game is teleporting you to that other area. When you die in that moment, you will die where you've teleported to. It can be frustrating. It seems like you died after teleporting, but you didn't. It is just that 0.5 second window that Ying was made to have. So you have to time your dimensional link a little sooner than right when you're about to die. Her ult is Illusory Rift. It heals your team for 600 health for every one second for a full eight seconds. Allies, you can now teleport to them as anchors as you would your clones. And it does remain active if you are killed. Your animation does not have to finish. It will remain active. I have seen a lot of people tell me, oh my God, why did you just ult? It actually can be really beneficial. In the time it takes for you to respawn, that's an entire time your team has no healing. And if you're at a really intense moment, that can kind of buffer the time where you have to respawn and run all the way back to them. So sometimes when it's a really intense moment that your team needs you and you're gonna die, it might be worth it to pop that ult and give them a buffer of healing for you to get back. Ying has three talents, Focusing Lens, Life Exchange, and Resonance. We're gonna start with Focusing Lens, her level zero card. Focusing Lens is a damage card. It buffs your damage and it does not help you at all when it comes to healing. It deals an additional 200 damage to an enemy if you hit them with all five shots of your illusionary mirror. There's not much else to say. This is a very straightforward talent. I've seen it highly played and this is probably my least played talent. Unlocking at level two, you have Life Exchange, her main healing card. 
It's use is that Shatter instantly heals your target for 800, but its cooldown is increased by 1, and it no longer explodes your illusions. Reduce the cooldown of Shatter by 2 seconds if you miss. This is interesting because the original card that this came out as was Shatter now instantly heals your target for 680 health per active illusion, but it consumes your illusions. When this first came out, it was just such an awful card and no one really gave the time of day or used it. However, when they changed it to the current state of it, where you shoot out a small ray of healing and your illusions are no longer destroyed, it became a much more viable card. I'll be honest, I didn't really play it when it was at the heat of its meta back in 2019, but I did switch to it soon after. You do need to shoot and aim. It shoots out a small ray of healing. You have to aim it at the ally you'd like to hit. There is a custom sound effect when you land that hit on the ally. However, some skins can make that a little more difficult or a little easier. Towards the end of the video, I'm going to talk about what skins are best to run with Ying and how those can help you whenever you're first starting out healing with this card. This is the card that I made today, and I have to say that if you're playing a solo Ying and you're not playing this card, it's going to make it substantially harder for your team to be able to pull out a win, and it is going to make it harder for your flanks to be able to pull out those kills they need to clear point. My biggest piece of advice when using this is hitboxes are super weird. Just go ahead and try to hit them. Especially if you're running the proper cards, you should have a near instant cooldown if you miss at this point. So trying anyway and missing and then instantly shattering again is no shame in the game. Because this shot, this shot hit. I was nowhere near them, but the hitboxes are really weird in this game. So please, shatter till your heart's content. Resonance is Ying's level 8 card and what I consider to be her hybrid card. It does not augment her healing, it only buffs her damage. However, this tends to be the card I see people play whenever they're trying to play a hybrid Ying. If an illusion is killed or expires, it triggers a shatter explosion, dealing 550 damage. It also increases the effectiveness of your shatter's illusions, movement speed, and explosion radius. This is actually the card that I used up until I switched to Life Exchange in 2019. However, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this card if you're healing. If you really hate life exchange, then this would be the next best card to use in my opinion. It punishes the enemy team for trying to eliminate your healing altogether. It gives a little boost to your team and damage, so at least that lack of healing is replaced by the up and damage for your team, but I just recommend if you're healing to use life exchange. This isn't a bad card, but like I mentioned earlier, clones can be really dumb and they don't always land very easily. This is my loadout for Ying. I know it looks a little odd, but let me explain why my choices of cards. When I run her as a healing healer with the life exchange talent, which is what I always run personally, I always run Brittle at 5. To me, there's no reason not to do this. It is a fact that you need Brittle in your build when you are running life exchange. If not at 5, at least at 3. From there, you need to decide if you want to have a more illusion-based build or if you want to have a more movement-based build, really. Personally, I run an illusion-based build because I still find my illusions to be a very valuable source of healing. I increase the health of my illusions, I increase the duration of my illusions, and I even like using Fracture, which heals them whenever I shatter, which is a lot. Actually, when you use this card, when you shatter and you miss, you are healing your illusions, meaning that you can spam your shatter at a wall and heal your illusions to full. My controversial card to have in there is encouragement. I find eliminations to be very, very valuable to me. I run kill to heal with most of my healers because when you heal somebody and then they kill someone, that is an elimination. So when I'm able to place things down early, move earlier than I anticipated I would, shatter on someone immediately after I just did, those things can be very valuable to me in my playstyle. If you're wanting to run a movement build, you could probably run things along the lines of pursuit or increasing your dimensional link by using spring forward. There's a lot of really great options with her. I just run an illusion build with my shatter build that I enjoy but there's so many other ways to run this character and you just need to find what works for you. Some cards that I just really would not recommend in general because I feel that they just don't add much to my gameplay is things like Disappear. 
I just feel that those cards don't really contribute much to a lot of gameplay regardless of what build you're running. I'm sure that somebody has a build that it's really really good in and I'd love to hear about it in the comments but I've just not really found one that is beneficial to. So when it comes to defending yourself as a support that can be kind of difficult. In general, a lot of times, you're going to need help defending your backline. It's very uncommon for a support to be able to fully manage your backline, especially if the opposing team has really aggressive flanks. My first tip would be place down your clones in front of you while you are fighting somebody. You can shoot through your clones, however, they cannot shoot you through your clones. Luna is a solid object for Io, but Ying's clones work differently. They are not uh, they are not objects for Ying, but for the opposing team, that means they have to break that deployable before they can shoot you, and you're getting at least a few more shots in on them. So whenever you see an ult like Drogo's, for instance, you can throw down your clone in front of the person he's going towards and last second save your teammate. That means Drogo's has now lost his ult down to zero, and you saved your teammate from having to respawn and come all the way back. So things like that can be really beneficial once you get to a place where you can aim that properly. When placing your clones, like I said earlier, it's really beneficial to notice where your allies are and place them near those allies. However, that's not only to heal them, but also for a very good escape for you. If you have a team that is paying attention to what's going on and you teleport to them with a flank on your tail, they're gonna be able to help you a lot more in that situation. Let's talk about the maps that Ying is really good on and when you wanna choose her and when you don't want to. I'm gonna throw up this tier list here. Obviously, this is not an end-all be-all. You might love a certain map on Ying and I might hate a certain map on Ying, but for my play style, this is what I've really noticed when having Ying as a healer for your team. Ascension Peak, Jaguar Falls, Shattered Desert, and Ice Mines are generally pretty good maps. The things that tie these maps together, particularly Ascension Peak and Shattered Desert, is right next to point there are alcoves or statues that you can place your clones behind, which makes them a lot harder to hit while having full access to your backline and point for healing. So they just have a really nice open space layout that allows you to hide clones while also using them for your team. And on the bright side, when you teleport to those clones, they're behind cover still. With Jaguar Falls and Ice Mines, they're very compact. So the way that their lanes are, you can place clones from the center lane on either of the other two lanes. So that can make it a lot easier to heal your flanks or your damages or watch what's going on not on point. So with Bright Marsh and Fish Market and Frog Isle, really all of these ones in the mid tier, the issue that I run into is they're either too compact like Warder's Gate and Frozen Guard on the new Frozen Guard, and too open on Serpent Beach, Stone Keep, Frog Isle, that the lanes just aren't very easily laid out and it's kind of hard to manage your team and heal them properly, especially when they're going in a wide variety of directions. I really do not use Yang on Split Quarry or the new Timber Mill, simply because since there's such high up ledges that you're on and there's so many flank routes and so many different places, it can be really hard to manage as Yang on those maps and figure out where your clones would go best. So it's just really hard to do prioritization on those. Again, like I said, these are just my opinions and how I work with my playstyle on these maps. So you might think one of my low tier maps are your favorite on Ying, and that's okay. So what Ying skins are good to use when you are running Life Exchange? I mentioned this earlier that the healing has a custom sound effect. When that sound effect plays, it can be more audible on some skins than others. And this is my personal opinion on what is easiest to hear and what is not. The default skin is actually very easy to hear. It has a very light mirror shatter and a very loud healing sound. And when I say the default, I mean any skin that uses a default mirror sound effect. So that includes Seer, Snapdragon, Quicksilver, her convention skin, and anything that uses that default mirror sound. Deathspeaker and Banshee are a pretty good skin to use. I do not personally own them. However, they do have a very distinct difference between their shatter and their heal shatter. 
With Divine Daughter and High Priestess, it also has a very distinct sound, and you can very much tell when you hit that healing. The Mermaid and Siren Yang are a really, really fantastic skin, and I highly recommend that one for a new player to Life Exchange because it has a bubble sound effect, but it gives a very, very loud healing sound effect that is very different than the base shatter. It is a similar case with Street Style, where it has a very significant difference between the Shatter and the Healing Shatter. It is also worth noting, however, that the sound with Street Style is not consistent. It is different sound effects, and it's a randomized effect, so you're going to get one of several different types of sounds. So, maybe not great for beginners, but it is easy to hear. With Jurassic Yang, it's fairly easy to hear, but you kind of have to listen out for it and it can get lost in the sound of battle. Carnival is actually the skin that I trained how to heal best on because it's a very distinct heartbreak sound whenever the mirror shatters, and that healing sound is the default healing sound. So it is a little lost in battle if you don't hear it right away, but it is a good skin to use. Replicant is pretty okay. It's not very loud. It's not super quiet, but it is a little bit hard to hear. Genie is not quite, you cannot hear it at all, but it does have a little twinkling sound and the healing sound effect. So it can be a little difficult to realize when you've healed. Full Dive and Res are really, really hard to hear that healing sound effect in my opinion. It sounds so similar to the base shatter that I can hardly tell half the time when I heal. The reason that these things matter is because sometimes those healing numbers can get lost in the healing and damage numbers and clone healing and all the things on your screen. So it can be really hard to digest all of the numbers that are coming up. So the sound effect is a really good way to know that you've healed someone. All the people who have made it to the end of this video, I really appreciate you sticking it out and listening to what I have to say. I appreciate all of you that have taken the time to watch my last video and comment on it and give me so much feedback. I really do appreciate that a lot. Like I said, if you'd like to like and subscribe, I would appreciate that. But if this isn't your speed, that's okay. And I really hope to see you in the next video. Bye guys.